Welcome to our new playlist, which is all about DeFi. We will learn how it works and its use cases. To get there, we will start with the basics, finance itself. So let's dive in. Finance includes all the things you can do with money. Creation, management, or even investment. It's the root of all money and money-related actions and services like stocks, loans, bonding, and lending, and a lot more. But we don't directly use finance. It's a concept we use in our daily lives through traditional finance tools and its institutions. These institutions include all kinds of private and central banks and others like mortgage companies. And these entities can literally control user accounts, like raising accounts or rejecting actions. It's like full control. Since they are the service providers, they also have full control over the transactions. They can censor them or take any kind of fee they want to, because in the end, you have no other option to accept or try your chance with another institution. Another issue is, since they own the data, they know all about you and all your actions and transactions. On top of that, they are not transparent in the process you have no idea what's going on behind the scenes. So how do we make the system better? There is not much us individuals can do to improve the existing system, but we can build another one. The first step is to create our own system that overcomes these flaws. It might not be perfect at first, and it isn't, and which we will see as we cover new things, but it takes time to improve. Since we will own this system, all these improvements and future depends on us. How do we create such a system? you might be asking. Well, luckily for us, some brilliant people already created the foundation of it. And we call it blockchain. In 2008, the famous and anonymous Satoshi Nakamoto released the Bitcoin white paper, pushing the idea of public blockchains. I said pushing the idea, because the idea of blockchain goes way back. Many genius minds like David Chaum, Nick Sabo, and Hal Finney dedicated years of effort to accomplish the idea of public blockchains. They laid the foundation and Nakamoto took the wheel and created Bitcoin. We don't exactly know who he is and I don't want to spend much time discussing it, but there are various ideas about him not being a single person, but a group of people working anonymously together. And this makes sense to me, as this is a very complicated system requiring expertise in distributed systems, cryptography, networking, and excellent low-level programming skills. Back to Bitcoin. Bitcoin enabled an amazing opportunity, and it's self-custody of money. I want to emphasize this. As long as Bitcoin lives, you are the one that is responsible and in control of your money. Yes, you still pay fees for your transactions, but it's for powering the network, not for profit. And Bitcoin has received lots of criticism in its lifetime for not being usable outside of being a store of value and lack of support for advanced flows and logic. But that has changed in the blockchain space as we stepped into the world of smart contracts with Ethereum. Ethereum is not the second biggest blockchain for nothing. In 2015, Ethereum launched with the capability of being programmable, and it's huge. Just like programs we use today, you can actually put advanced logic behind these programmable things called smart contracts. Any logic you can think of, of course, given that the Ethereum's programming language supports it, can be created. It's amazing. The idea of programmable money brings a lot to the table, and it gives us a shot at improving our own financial system. And we need a name for our distributed and trustless finance system. Is it distributed finance? Trustless finance? No, it's decentralized finance. DeFi. So what is DeFi and what are the differences between the centralized finance? The infrastructure of DeFi is open, visible to anyone, permissionless, accessible by anyone, and interoperability, meaning it's compatible with the other DeFi instruments on the same platform. Most importantly, it's not controlled by anyone but the community itself. This is a system that people own. DeFi is all about putting the power back to your hands. Unlike traditional finance, where banks and institutions decide the rules, DeFi purely operates on smart contracts. All the financial instruments you use in traditional finance can also be created in DeFi. And in fact, most of them have already been created. DeFi allows you to perform the same operations, but without sacrificing your privacy, control, or your soul. In our next video, we will explore the DeFi stack and how assets are tokenized. If you are exploring Web3 and blockchain space, 
We also got introduction videos. Check them out. You should check the description for our socials and some other useful links. See you around, and as always, don't stop, keep on rising.